What would you want people to know about Northern Ireland? So I would want people to know um, about Northern Ireland that um, it's not all bombs and fighting. We are much more than what people know of this country, which is the conflict, the legacy of the Troubles. My name is Catherine Vaughan, I'm 24 years old and I live in West Belfast and I'm a youth engagement officer. Um, I'm a youth worker and it's my passion. Uh, my name is Joel Keyes, I'm a 22 year old young person from Belfast. Um, I've been doing work um, politically here for a few years now. Welcome to Northern Ireland. This is Belfast. Birthplace of the Titanic, the capital is a vibrant cultural hub with a heavy historical legacy. The city was one of the epicenters of the Troubles, a term used to describe the 30-year-long conflict in Northern Ireland between nationalist and republican Irish Catholics in favour of a united Ireland free from British rule and protestant unionists and loyalists historically attached to the British crown. 25 years after the end of the conflict, their children are writing a new chapter in the country's history navigating the immense difficulties of dealing with Northern Ireland's past. For the first lot of years of my life, I would have called myself British and British only. Um, as I've grown older, um, I've come to accept um, the label Irish. I am an Irish person. I'm a British Irish person. And beyond that, I'm a unionist. Um, I believe in the idea that we should remain in, in the union with the United Kingdom. To deny my Irish identity is almost to deny the spirit of uniting these different separate identities together. When you say you're a Republican, it comes with a lot of flack. Uh, you, you take on a lot of trouble when you say that you're a Republican. I think being a part of this community, you have a lot of elders that have went through the troubles who can really you know, tell you stories of what it used to be like and we can tell them stories of what it's like now and the experiences are night and day. So I think really learning from the community of things of the past has really helped us as young people not repeat the mistakes that's happened like during the conflict. The Troubles were seeded in centuries of tensions between the Irish and the English. In 1921, the Anglo-Irish Treaty ended the Irish War of Independence, creating the Irish Free State, Modern Ireland, and allowing Northern Ireland to opt out and remain part of Britain. In 1948, Ireland became a republic and left the Commonwealth. In the years that followed, tensions intensified in Northern Ireland between those who wanted the two islands to unite and those who wished to remain under British rule, until a conflict broke out at the end of the 1960s. 30 years later, the Good Friday Agreement officially put an end to three decades of bloodshed. The scars left by that time are still visible in the minds of people and their territory and have been passed on from one generation to the next. We don't really talk about it in our family. Um, it's kind of a, you're walking on eggshells. You know, whenever you ask questions, people are usually happy to give you answers. Um, but it's not like uh, sitting around the campfire while, you're, while your family shared stories of the past or while they tell you their memories. It's, it's certainly a, what is it you want to know and what is the least amount of information I can give you that will satisfy whatever question it is that you have. In my family and families of people that I know, a lot of them would have been involved in things like paramilitaries. Um, not always for good reason, but a lot of the time, you know, it's maybe because they saw their best friend was killed at the bar that they go to, and they felt a real sense that there was a, a real danger on them and their families. The troubles had a massive impact on my granny. My granny reared four sons as a single parent on her own during the troubles and watched a lot of people die. My uncle was shot when he was 15 by a, a soldier, uh, by a rubber bullet, and he had to learn how to walk, talk, um, feed himself, look after himself. His youth was almost kind of stolen from him. And still to this day, it's affecting my uncle. So um, it's very difficult to kind of leave the past in the past. But when you look at examples and you see how bad it's impacted your family, why would you want to go back? In the late 60s, tensions between the nationalist and unionist communities flared into deadly sectarian violence. Paramilitary groups grew in numbers through the 70s and 80s, and so did violent attacks. The conflict earned the characteristics of a civil war, marked by sensational bombings, 
assassinations, street fighting, and internment without trial, leaving 3,500 people dead and 40,000 injured. So this is it here. This is my great granny, Kathleen Clark. She is the second woman down in the middle. She was always out in the front line trying to protect those who were being wrongfully persecuted or discriminated against. Um, even if the kids didn't belong to her, um, she would have always said, that's my son, that's my nephew. She would have been running after them because you know, kids were being injured as a result. They were being shot. They were in areas that were really unsafe. So this is an important part of my history. These murals can also be found on the remains of around a hundred walls erected in the four corners of the city, known as the Peace Walls, marking a boundary between nationalist and unionist neighbourhoods. First walls were erected during the Troubles, but more were built up until 2013, well after the signing of the Good Friday Agreement. Some have even grown in height over the years, while others are still closed at night. Although religion plays less of a decisive role in the lives of young people in Northern Ireland, Catherine and Joel grew up in a city that still relies on this identity marker to separate one group from the other. I was told that I couldn't wear an O'Neill's top or a Celtic top or my GAA gear walking about the city centre or the Shankill because I would be a target. I have Irish tattooed on my forearm and I was also told by my father, don't tattoo anything Irish because it's an identifier. People will know that you're a Catholic. If I walk down the Peace Wall today, you walk on one side of it, which is right, and that's where the Catholics walk, right? And if you walk on the left side of the Peace Wall, you're a Protestant. I walk on this side, and Joel walks on this side, and the cars come between us. I have never walked on that opposite side of the road, because I was told not to. These divisions exist at all levels, across Northern Ireland's counties, in the corners of Belfast streets and even on its pavements. In some British neighbourhoods, paramilitary flags fly alongside the Union Jack. Paramilitary groups were officially disbanded following the Good Friday Agreement. But today, more than 40% of young people in Northern Ireland continue to feel their influence. They did not disband. Um, that's a fact. They may have destroyed some of their weaponry or whatever, but they are still there. Uh, very much. But in this country, when we talk about paramilitaries, there is no nuance when we use this term. It's, very, it's all very simple. If you're a paramilitary, you're a bad guy who did bad things and you're, 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 you're one of the evil ones. Yeah, that one. Whenever we're talking about them here, they often talk about them like they're foreign invaders or they're colonizers. But a lot of times it's our uncles or it's our brothers or our cousins or, you know, it's, it's people that we know and have grown up in this area, who, who are known in the area. Um, usually highly respected paramilitary members would be highly respected members of their community regardless of whether they were in it or not. So it's hard on a practical level to break up these organizations because if you have 10 people who have always done crimes together and now it's 10 people who just sometimes do crimes together, it's like, <laughs> it's fair. It's very, very hard to, to work with that, especially when you can't, you can't come in and force people not to speak to each other again. Um, and it's not like you can take them out and send them back to where they came from because they're from here. Where I come from, the paramilitaries were dismantled. There is no such thing as the IRA anymore. Yes, we know the IRA existed. There probably still is members of the IRA still alive today. Is it an active paramilitary in my community? No. Nope. Born after the 1998 agreement, Catherine and Joel's generation is known as the peace babies, those who have not experienced the conflict, not officially anyway. 25 years on, both are involved in projects funded by the EU after the agreement to bridge the gap between young people on both sides of the divide. It frustrates me being referred to as, as a peace baby generation because it feels to me very much like, for my generation and younger certainly, peace is here. Peace exists. We do not beat each other up for, for being parts of different communities or for parts of different religions. I think the, the term peace babies is overused. We didn't vote for peace. It was the people that came before us that voted for peace. So I feel like my mummy and my grandparents are really the peace babies because it was the peace that was promised to them 25 years ago. Um, I think this generation 
has had a lot to deal with as a result of the Troubles. Um, the lack of employment opportunities, the lack of aspirations, the depression. I also think like politicians don't really seem to be interested in our version of peace. And they seem to be very much interested in their own version of peace. So when you talk about putting a label as peace babies on us, I want to know where the peace is. Where was the opportunities? Where was the support? Like everything that was promised, where is it? So my perspective now is I want to do my best to turn Northern Ireland into the best version of itself as it can be. And if that doesn't work out, well, then I can go, you know, then I can go and at least I can go then and say, well, I tried. It's going to be uncomfortable and it's going to be tough. No one's going to say it's going to be easy, but it'll be worth it. It'll be worth it for the, for the future generations to come. They don't deserve to, to live how we're living now. I would hope for a country where we pull our head out of our ass and, and we start selling ourselves for what we're worth, which is a lot.